All right, another Tech Biz tutorial here for Graphic Design 1 class. We've made a logo uh, using our initials and started learning this uh, section about creating a brand and uh, the importance of having a consistent identity. And to practice these things that we've learned, we're going to make a set of business stationery uh, using Photoshop and uh, the business stationery is going to consist of a letterhead, an envelope, and a business card. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a new document. And the size of this uh, is going to be just the size of a standard sheet of paper, 8.5 inches wide by 11 inches tall. Resolution 72, background color white is fine. Uh, I'm going to make the letterhead first, and a letterhead is a piece of stationary paper, stationary ERY, not ARY as in standing still, but business stationary ends with an ERY, and this would be a like a uh, package of paper that would be used to print off business car or er, uh, business letters that we'd be mailing out. Uh, so the letterhead probably only has to be single-sided and it's kind of up to you what you want to put on this alright you've you were to look at examples online and come up with ideas of what you want for yours maybe you're gonna you know uh, put the address on there or whatever uh, mine is gonna be real basic to get started here so I will go to file and then we'll go to place embedded and I had this saved. I think I have a folder on here called stationary. Yes. All right. That's where I saved my logo that I made from the demonstration before. All right. I'm going to kind of get this logo on here. Like so. And this blue is kind of important to me, obviously, because it's a color of my logo. And if you're not sure what exact color that is and you want to use it later, I just use my eyedropper tool. And if I click inside of this logo, it brings the color in my little color selector down here. Then I can click on that square. All right, and I can copy that. It's pound sign, hex value. 0058 DD so that's the value for that color and right, I'm gonna click OK and I will then go to my text tool and down here at the bottom I for this I'm just gonna go maybe with oh uh, I mean I'm not gonna do anything too fancy for this I'm just trying to give you the idea of you know some things that we can do and if instead of regular I go to black and then I'm just gonna go pound sign we we the mighty bulldogs alright and actually if it will let me okay I'll bold italics it alright so I got that there and I'm gonna center that as best I can there at the bottom and this text down here when I select that select the letters and I go up here to change the color then now I can use my control V and I paste that same blue that is in that text alright now what I can do uh, to make this kind of have like a watermark is I can actually take this opacity you know and maybe bring it down to about 15 percent and I'm gonna do the same thing for my oops yikes uh, I'm gonna do the same thing for my logo alright and now I have these kind of these elements that are on here from my stationary of my letterhead. 
all right and if you wanted to you could put kind of your return address there you could put other things on there but for what I'm doing just to show you uh, I didn't have to recreate the logo that we made with our very first design I just went to file and place uh, place embedded and then brought it into here and then I dropped down the opacity and now that this one is done I would have this saved as a PSD and also as a PNG alright it doesn't really matter for for what we're doing here in the grand scheme of things but that's just what I'm gonna do I'm gonna save on computer I'm gonna save it in this stationary folder alright and I would save it as a PSD just for the sake of time though I'm gonna just do the PNG to make this uh, quick and simple and I'm gonna call this one in P letterhead all right and then I'm gonna click OK uh, I'm leaving the background white in this case because I want there to be a white square because this is kinda what my sheet of paper would look like sometimes people will make a mistake they'll think they're gonna be really cool and make their letterhead a solid color or a dark color and just remember it has to be visible when you're printing letters onto it unless your printer can print white ink you know having your letterhead be black or dark gray is not very smart uh, so it's kind of a better thing to you know go with the um, to go with the white light colors you know light things where the ink would show up Okay, so that's the first one I have. Now the second one I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to make my envelope. So the business envelope is going to be 9.5 and the height is going to be 4.125, 4 and 8. And make double check, make sure the units of measurement are on inches while we're working on this. That's kind of a mistake sometimes people accidentally get into pixels or whatever and they and they get the wrong sized image alright resolution 72 I'm gonna go to create alright now what I want to do is just like last time go file place embedded I'm gonna bring in my logo here and it's kind of up to you how you want to do this you know if where you want the logo to be if you want it to be in the middle if you want it to be kind of to the side or whatever it's it's your call I think I'm gonna roll with the middle on my envelope because it is diagonal and it looks a little bit weird on the left hand side I would discourage you from putting your logo in the upper right hand corner or anywhere on this right hand side because that's where the stamps gonna go when you when you mail the letter alright and uh, I'm going to change the opacity to 15% just like I did with the other to have that similar style. All right. To have my similar, consistent, same identity throughout all of these elements that I'm putting together. So here's this is. Now, what else would you want to put on your envelope? Sometimes people will make two envelopes or two separate files. Uh, one of them will be the front of the envelope and the other will be the back of the envelope. You know, that's kind of up to you on this. I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Now, what I want to do is I am going to stick with my bold italic in the blue here, probably. I may change it later. But if I zoom in on the top left-hand corner, that is where our um, return address is going to go. The, when we print these on envelopes, we don't want to have to keep writing the address all the time. So we're going to put an address there. Now, when you're making this and turning this in for a school project, I want you to do what I'm doing and, you know, protect your identity and be smart about all that stuff and just use a made up address. All right. So here I'm just going to go, I'm going to type in North Platte High School. Okay, then I'm going to go uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th Street.
North Platte and E one 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 one. All right. You can make up the town. You can make up the you know whatever states. Uh, just just make up uh, the address for that. So that way you don't have that information uh, on there where people can see that. You know, especially when we put these things in an online portfolio later. So. Uh, right here, I have North Platte High School, 1, 2, 3, 4. You know, it's just like we would be addressing an envelope regularly, which a lot of people, you know, don't really know how to do. Uh, sometimes, you know, people will put a little square here, you know, to show where the stamp would go and say postage. Uh, that's fine. It's kind of up to you. Uh, but for this one right here, North Platte High School, 4, 5th Street. North Platte, Nebraska, 11111. And then that's what we need for this. Okay, it's kind of it's kind of up to you on what the size is you want for that. Now maybe I would want that to be I probably am gonna stick with the blue because that's my you know colors for my logo. I'm not gonna watermark it because I do want it to show up well there. And um, for for this thing here, sometimes people will put, you know, I could have put my hashtag up here, or I could have made some other things with the uh, with the design as well, or made it like half blue and half gold, and then have the NP in there. Uh, but for just this simple uh, demonstration, this will be fine for what I'm showing you. I want you to be as creative as you can. But, you know, be thoughtful, you know, in putting the address there and, and that kind of stuff, you know, where, you know, include, even though the address is made up, make sure you have all the elements of it on there. All right, so uh, we'll go now to File, Save As. I'm going to save this one into the same folder. I'm going to save it as a PSD and a PNG. And I will call this NP business envelope and save solid all right uh, now the last part that I'm gonna make and again this one uh, can be multiple sides as well you know so if I was gonna make this you know then the second time I go through from my envelope for the reverse side then I would keep the same dimensions and then I would just take the design out and remake what I want the other side to look like uh, the business card is going to be, who knows? I mean, a lot of business cards are going to be three and a half inches by two inches. That can be portrait. It could be landscape. Uh, if you're, you know, if your uh, logo is maybe something similar to a uh, coffee company, you know, like Starbucks or something. Uh, maybe your business card is actually going to be a coaster that's going to have the information with the QR code on there. I mean, your business cards are, as you saw when you were uh, searching these up on on the Google Images for creative business cards, they can be in any kind of shape, any kind of size. Uh, you know, if you're a graphic designer and you don't have a creative business card, you're probably you know first impressions last a lifetime and if, it, if your business cards terrible you're probably not going to do very good in graphic design right so what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm just gonna go with the traditional uh, 3.5 wide and for the height I'm gonna go two inches now you can change the size of yours you can make it whatever shape you want uh, you know you you have some leeway with this one all right, and I'm going to go create, and here's my business card. Now, remember when we first started using Photoshop and we said there's a few things that Photoshop we're going to use, and it's not the best program for it? Business cards are one of them. When we uh, bring in our um, logos to this, okay, when I go to place embedded and bring in the logo in here, Okay, and I shrink this down. It's going to be a little bit pixely. You know, that's just that's just the way it is. There's not much we can that we can do about that. Okay, um, 
but if you're zoomed in very close it's not going to look very good uh, when we're zoomed out it's not going to look that pixelated all right so just something to be aware of uh, don't be discouraged for it we're just doing the best we can with photoshop on this and when we uh, start learning other programs later we will learn about uh, ways to make these uh, to where they're not pixely and to where they look sharp no matter what the size of the image is all right so here this is uh, I'm gonna you know what would go on a business card what are some things that we need to know well I can use my hashtag we WTMB All right, and then I will kind of shrink this down a little bit. Kind of get it centered on there a little bit more. And then maybe up here, I'm just going to go North Platts High School. Alright, and then control T that to uh, shrink down the size. And then maybe uh, if I go back to these other logos, I'm going to go open up that logo real quick so I can zoom in and see the yellow in here and get the yellow as closely matched as I can alright now if I go back here then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna think about what it should go on your business card and you know this one I'm gonna go maybe www dot nphs dot edu all right, that's a made up web address. So again, with these, if you decide to put your email address on there, don't use your real email address with this. All right, in real life you would. Okay, but these ones where these are not a real company, we're just, we're using our made up addresses, uh, you know, just for out of safety, okay? And if I maybe switch and go to just italic on this one so I'm going to go uh, www.mphs.edu because obviously you know a web page is going to be important and then I am actually going to duplicate by going into the layers panel here go and duplicate layer all right, and on the copy, I'm going to bring that down, and then I'm actually going to change the text in this one. And I'm just going to put a Twitter handle on here. Okay, so maybe this is just going to be something I'm handing out to uh, at a career fair where people are wanting to learn about, you know, if they want to come and work at this school. All right. At MPHS. All right. So we have these things on here like that. Once you have it put together, you know, hopefully you did some, you'll do some sketches first, you know, well, like what we've kind of been saying to do all along. You know, that might be a good idea, but kind of play around with the layout and see if you get it to uh, how you want this to look you know it's kind of your call um, you know and again I don't want this thing to be too in-depth because I'm not trying to do your uh, project for you here but maybe I'm gonna make a new layer and with this dotted line with the dotted rectangle tool I can use shift backspace and fill with the color and choose that blue 
All right, and then Control D to deselect, and then I can go here to my North Platte High School text. Switch that to white. All right. Okay, not the best thing I've ever made, but for what I'm trying to do here, uh, just to give you some some ideas of what to play around with, uh, this will work. You know, you might decide to put a fake phone number on your uh, business card and a, and a physical address. It, it just kind of depends on what you are trying to do. But as long as it has, you know, your identity to it, a name, and some way for them to contact you or to find you, whether... Uh, physically or digitally uh, you know that's that's kind of what's most important for this I kept the same colors uh, with all of these the the only difference is on the business card uh, we don't have the watermark you know because here I would be writing an address or I'd be printing an address on there and I want the logo to show behind it but the, the type face is the same we used we use the same logo on every uh, part of this stationery. Uh, we use the Arial Italic, whether it was bold or italic, with all of all of these. We use the same color uh, for those as well. And I think this is starting to look pretty decent for for this. One thing I may look back later. I have all of the letters for these lowercase everything else is uppercase maybe on this part here I want these to be uppercase um, if I was going to go back and change that if I wanted it to be a consistent identity I should do that because right here at North Platte High School so to model this alright and to model proper um, technique or whatever Okay, uh, now I can go in here alright and with these here it's kind of maybe the TH and the ST you know is going to not all be capitalized and then uh, North Platte So that would be something for me to kind of play around with on this as well. Uh, so I, since I made the changes to this here, I will resave this as into that same folder. All right, and then uh, that's my envelope. So I'm just going to overwrite the previous one. Yes, I want to replace it. All right, and then here's my business card. I will go file save as and save to my computer. And then I can call this one NP Business Card. All right, so we have those three elements all finished up. Now you can turn this in for a grade uh, to me as when you're done with yours. You can email them. You'll have to put a, a reflection with it just like we did uh, with the logo. You can email all of these elements to me as an attachment or uh, submit them into the Google Classroom either way uh, to get that done. And remember how we kind of mentioned in some of the ideas before uh, with this class, if you do exactly what's asked of you, you know you're, you're going to be proficient. You're not advanced. In order for you to do something advanced, to get an advanced grade, you need to uh, take this and apply something else to it. So what I want to do here now is I'm going to actually show you how using Photoshop we can put these together as kind of a mock-up where then you can just turn in the mock-up to me and that would be one example of how you could turn in uh, some of your work uh, in more of an advanced way. All right, So I'm going to go File, New and this one here is going to be 8 inches wide by 10 inches tall okay 
and uh, in my color selection here I want the top color to be black I want the bottom color to be white and I have a background layer I'm gonna click on that lock to make it go away so I can edit this actual background alright step one is going to be to double click to get into layer zeros layer style uh, I want to select gradient overlay alright now your gradient overlay may look something kinda like this uh, when you have gradient overlay selected here's what we want to check the blend mode is going to be normal that's fine uh, the opacity should be a hundred for the moment we're going to change it later then I'm going to click here on gradient I want to click down on the little down arrow and there's basics and I want to go from black to checkered or in other words from black to transparent I'm going to select that one all right and then if the style I have radial selected and the angle doesn't matter for right now and this the scale is going to be 150 I want it to be huge okay now what I want to do is that yours should look something like this if yours looks the opposite of that there's this little reverse check mark we want it to be lighter in the middle than on the outside alright and now I'm gonna drag this opacity down to about oh I'm gonna try 15 alright now when I click this little check mark to the left of gradient overlay it barely makes a difference if you just look at this picture it doesn't look like anything but what we're doing is we're making it look, look like our elements that we created are going to be laid out on a desk or on a just a surface alright and so this is kind of like it's on a desk a gray desk and there's some light shining down and it's kind of a spotlight more in the middle of the surface I'm gonna click OK now alright now I will go to file place embedded and I want to select my NP letterhead alright now the letterhead itself is eight and a half by eleven which is much larger larger than the uh, surface that we have here because this is just eight by ten so it would normally fit so what I will do now is I'm gonna put this kind of on the left hand side and I'm gonna shrink it down to where it fits in there this is just for a mock-up so you could say hey here's the stationery I made this is what it looks like and if they like it then you can send them the actual digital files you created okay now because the background isn't perfectly white we can kinda of see this piece of paper is sitting on there but we want to go into the letterhead layer style double click over here and I want to go to uh, drop shadow down here at the bottom drop shadow the blend mode should be multiply the opacity should be 35 the angle for this I'm gonna go I don't know I like to have this kinda go from an angle a little bit and since this paper is lighter in the middle or the surface is lighter in the middle and it's darker on the outside I'm gonna kinda have the darker shadows be on the outside of this a little bit uh, the distance sometimes people will exaggerate this you know you don't want that to be any higher than zero or one alright it's kind of up to you one is is almost too much I wish there was 0 0.5 uh, spread is zero and size I have is three okay so once we kinda have that on there now it actually looks like a sheet of paper is sitting on a desk okay I'm gonna click OK and then we are gonna go to file place embedded again and this time we're gonna bring in the envelope and just like we talked about before we're gonna shrink this down this isn't gonna be an exact you know thing about is this isn't going to be an exact uh, scale version I just kinda want it to be close you know if I were to fold this up would it you know multiple times would it fit into this envelope alright so now what I want to do is I'm gonna put this envelope 
here to where it's kind of centered as well and it's overlapping the paper all right and now if I go to this layer style for my letterhead and I right click I can actually copy my layer style go to copy layer style and it's going to remember those shadows and everything and I'm going to go to business envelope right click and then I can go to uh, paste layer style and now we got the shadow in all the same settings for my envelope all right so that looks pretty good now if I had two parts to my envelope I'd put the other one maybe below it you know you can kinda space these out how you want to um, you know whatever works best for you but you want them kinda spread out and, and centered and we can fix that at the end okay now I'll go file place embedded again business card alright the business cards much smaller than the others so I can shrink that down and put this right here maybe about right there and then I am gonna uh, go here and I can paste the layer style to the business card and then we have that set up so all those look pretty nice uh, then what I can do is I can actually um, select these three things all three layers and I can use my move tool and kind of uh, center that so this here uh, is kind of my mock-up where where I can see all the stationary you can have it nice and orderly like this uh, sometimes I have people that will control T and kind of move the uh, move the elements around off-centered a little bit and I don't hate that either you know it's it's kind of up to you it allows it to be a little sometimes I think uh, you know knowing who the audience is for uh, who this is speaking to who's the client if they're a little bit more uh, kind of creative if they um, you know are kind of outside the box thinkers maybe you're gonna have your layout be a little bit off-centered and turn that in it looks a little more fun I guess uh, if the person you know if if their personality is everything's real uh, by the book everything they're super organized and everything then you want those to be straight up and down you know this might kind of bother them when they look at that right so uh, that's kind of up to you how you want to do that and uh, how you want this to uh, look when it's done but as long as when you're done the most important thing is everything's kind of spread out nicely it's kind of in the middle we don't have all the elements in the top left hand corner you know and it, and it looks nice on there everything's spaced out good uh, we're we're no closer to the left picture to the left of the canvas than we are from the right and the same from the bottom uh, to the bottom of this to the top of this to the top of this it's all uh, relatively even okay so once you're done with that you know again save it as a as a PSD and then also save it as a PNG okay and then uh, when I go save as to my computer PNG not Pixar PNG okay and then I will call this one NP stationary um, I don't know layout I'm just gonna call it a layout or spread or whatever you want to call it All right, and then I'm gonna go save and then you have this here you could send that to the client oh I really like it or if you have like an online shop where you are uh, selling your uh, digital products you know not physically but digitally and you want to have like a thumbnail where people can look and see the different themes you can make they could look at this and it looks pretty nice um, the other thing I like about this is when we go to view 
regular size it looks pretty nice you know and if this is my thumbnail view like sometimes people will look at the thumbnail and they'll try to copy it and paste it and use it as their own uh, by making an 8 by 10 and importing our pictures into this and shrinking them down if somebody did try to take this and make it their own work you know by copying and pasting uh, it's going to be super pixelated people are going to be able to tell so I like this because it's a good way to show your work to make it look realistic how it how it would look in real life and also it's kind of a neat little way to protect your work without putting a giant ugly watermark over the top that says copyright you know it makes it not so um, offensive to look at okay so that's where those are so when you're done you if you decide to do to do the advanced method uh, you can take this picture with your stationery that you created and uh, you can email it to me as the attachment or you can add it to Google uh, Classroom and then also make sure that you include that reflection from the directions in the Google Classroom that I sent out. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Good luck. I'm excited to see how they turn out.